Hi there, this is Solid Children from Solid Children Films and welcome to another director battle. Yes, I have more of them. Um, this one is more a philosophical battle and it's a chance for me to ask you guys some questions about how many films of a director do you need to see before that director makes your favourite lists. So today's competition, the battle, it's not a competition, just a bit of fun, um, is between Masaki Kobayashi and Kenji Mizuguchi. Two directors that are in my favourite directors list, even though one of them I've only seen three films, and the other one I've only seen four of their films. So it is a question of, is three films enough? You know, Mizuguchi made lots of films and I've only seen three of his films. But those three films are astounding and that's why he's on my favourite director list. Kobayashi didn't make as many, but there's still plenty of Kobayashi films I haven't seen. I've only seen four. But they're all wonderful and one of them you could make an argument not only being amongst the greatest films ever made but possibly being the greatest film ever made. Is that enough to make a favourite director's list? Do you need to see a director's whole catalogue before you can make a complete judgement because of all the directors that are in my favourite list you know there's not too many that I've seen every single thing that they've done or you know, every single short film every single documentary every single feature length film but this is an example of you know the extreme of not having watched that many of their films but the quality of those films is so high that they're in my favourite director's list. I mean, you could say quite rightly, well, how can they be in your favourite director's list if you've only seen, you know, 30% of their films or less than 30% of their films? But you guys can answer that question, not me. I got off the hook. So you could argue in my vote well, you could be arguing that my vote doesn't count throughout this whole proceeding um, because of my taste or lack thereof. Um, but again, how do you feel if you see a couple of films by a director? Is that enough if those films are amazing? Or can directors not be amongst your favourites until you've seen the vast majority of their films? In Mizuguchi's case... Some of his films are hard to find. Um, I do have his version of 47 Ronin. I need to watch it because it's about four hours long. But I do have that in DVD. I managed to get that from Korea, I believe. Um, but also I don't have that out of print £300 box set that Eureka did several years ago before I was into the, the YouTube bug. Um, so let's go through these few films by these two directors and I'll just give thoughts and again I'm loving your comments um, far more eloquent than mine about who you prefer between Kobayashi and Mizuguchi and what films are I missing that I need to track down by these directors. So we'll start with Mizuguchi and Life of Oharu. Again, you can see you could say Mizuguchi, um, along with Satyajit Ray, 
and Bergman and um, Woody Allen even you could argue you know among the best for female roles Life of O'Hara is about um, this noble woman who is reduced and becomes a street prostitute in her journey it's unflinching and it's quite wonderful Mizuguchi's films are elegant um, fairly simple compositions but just so beautiful and desperate and harrowing that's probably another reason why he is on my favourite director list despite the fact I haven't seen that many of his films next is Sancho the Bailiff or Sancho Deu which is just absolutely phenomenal like this was in my top 150 or favourite 150 sorry not top 150 um, this is a stunning film so bleak so beautiful um, emotional gut punches aplenty um, the story of two children who get separated um, children get separated from their parents and eventually kind of find each other not completely um, a brutal film but also poetic um, and beautiful with one of the most emotionally devastating finales in cinema history just an absolute masterpiece then we have Ugetsu or Ugetsu Morigat Morigatari which again is another beautiful Mizuguchi film um, it's a ghost story um, about greed and ambition as two men leave their wives behind um, and we find out what happens to their wives as they seek glory still stands up, still relevant and again that it's a film of poetic savagery his films are well, the three films I've seen um, are brutal yet eloquent um, and just pure class then we have Kobayashi who was political was a bit of a studio rebel studio wasn't really sure what to do with them most of the time again he only made 22 films I don't think they're all features um, but again I've only seen four of his films so do I have the right to put them in my favourite directors list only you can tell me that so we have Kwaidan this is the Eureka Masters of Cinema DVD which is a beautiful set because you also get art cards as well this is just a beautiful anthology of ghost stories it's three hours long but it doesn't seem like three hours obviously it's episodic some you prefer to others but they're all just amazing Oichi the Earless amongst others just visually ravishing you know shot on sets it's a visual feast and then Eureka last year maybe um, it's hard to remember like that, the last two years are a bit of a blur um, released on Blu-ray special edition um, and obviously the Blu-ray looks amazing watch it on a screen as big as you possibly can it's just a stunning film like this was in my favourite 150 as well last year just a beautiful beautiful film and again like I've said I've done a video on kind of the best three hour plus films it's a gift to make a three hour film not seem like three hours then we have Harakiri this is the Criterion uh, two disc DVD which is one of those weird criterions that open 
on either side, they have a centre spine. Takashi Nakadai, um, or Tatsu Nakadai, sorry, with one of his um, amazing career performances. We'll come to him in a little bit. And this is the Eureka Master Cinema Blu ray. Again, Kobayashi actually questioning the Bushido, the kind of at times kind of senseless rules that kind of defy logic um, and get in the way of doing the right thing. Again, I think that was in my favourite 150. So even though these I haven't seen many of these directors' films, a lot of them are pretty high up in my favourites list. Obviously I didn't do a ranking my top favourite 150 because that would just be ridiculous. And then next is Samurai Rebellion with Tashira Mufun. Again this is about another satire on the Bushido and sometimes the ridiculousness of the code getting in the way of doing the right thing. Um, and Mufuni's character and his son stand up. Um, but they obviously have to take the consequences of standing up and that's another wonderful film but obviously you have to talk about the human condition to my shame this did take a lot of years for me to see obviously the nine hours runtime can sometimes put you off but when you actually get into it, the time doesn't matter. You want to spend more time um, with Kaji, Tatsu Nakadai's character. Um, so obviously we have part one, part two, and part three. Again, you could argue um, it's in the conversation for the greatest film of all time. Um, it's not widely regarded in the mainstream as one of the greatest films of all time, but um, that's just because they don't really talk about films from outside certain countries being the greatest film of all time. Um, this just kind of blew me away, I think. Most people who see it have the same reaction. Um, it's it's amazing to me the alchemy that goes into making a really good film that's 90 minutes long. So to make a masterpiece that's like nine hours long is just mind-boggling to me. Um, but again does Kobayashi get on a favourite director's list just because he made arguably the greatest film of all time? If he made this and then made 15 other films that were all three star films, does that justify being on your favourite director's list? Um, obviously for me, the answer is yes. Um, for the four Kobayashi films that I've seen, but none of them are three star films, they're all fours and fives. Um, and the three Mizuguchi films that I've seen um, are all fours and fives. So for me, between these two, the votes Kobayashi because not just of the human condition, but um, he did kind of different things. Now, obviously, I haven't seen a lot of Mizuguchi. I haven't seen a lot of Kobayashi. Um, you're happy to laugh at me in the comments for that. But what I've seen, these are two mighty impressive filmmakers, and they have to be because they're both on my favourites list, despite not having watched that many of their films. So again, thanks very much for watching. I'm really enjoying the comments. Um, and again, you can let me know who would win in this battle, but not a competition. Just a bit of fun. 
between Kobayashi and Mizuguchi. So thanks very much for watching. This is Solitary Ronin from Solitary Ronin Films. Saying cheerio.